welcome to another episode of SKST Radio, and you are tuned in to the Cami Grayson Show. And today I have two very special guests. Not one, not two. Oh, wait a minute. I have three special guests today <laughs> on my show. And I have the one and only Charlie Palmer and Dr. Carita L. Brown. I am so excited to have you guys on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Thank you for having us. Well, let me tell you, this is like a special occasion. Dr. Ron is here because he's a big fan. Big fan. <laughs> so I, could, I couldn't have done this show with him not He's supposed to be engineering. That, that tells you how much, how big of a fan he is. So he is here to meet you guys. And so tell people who you are and what you do. Oh, so I am Dr. Karita Brown. Uh, so good to be here with you good people. Um, so I am a sociologist, a professor at Emory University and proud co-producer of the new Brownies book, a love letter for black families with uh, Charlie Palmer. And, and I am Charlie Palmer, a visual artist uh, and uh, Dr. Karita Brown's husband. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, so you guys got a lot going on and you are like history. So uh, I am, first let's talk about her story, then we'll talk about history. So you, Dr. Brown, tell us a little bit about you and what you, the projects that you have going on right now. Oh, wow. So, you know, we're knee deep in the new Brownies book stuff. So we've been on a national book tour for the last six months, visiting museums and high schools and elementary schools and historical societies and everything in between sharing libraries. and libraries yeah. uh, sharing about um the not only the new brownies book that we've co-produced that was published just six months ago um uh, today but also about the legacy of the brownies book that goes back 100 years from from now but i'm also uh, if you can believe it just finishing up a manuscript for my next uh soul authored book titled The Battle for the Black Mind. It's forthcoming with Legacy Lit by Hache Book Group. Um, really excited about this project where I look at the century of separate and unequal education systems in the United States preceding Brown versus Board of Education. And I'm really excited about this project, especially since um, May 17th will mark the 70th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education. Wow. So those are the two things that I've been working on. Um, yeah. <laughs> she got a cosign. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, so tell us a little bit about the book, guys. I know it's well, on sale right now on Amazon, and I just showed a picture of it for those who have not seen the cover. I, let me put it back up again. But go ahead. Tell us a little bit about the book. Well, the book is doing very well. Uh, thank you to the support of all those that love their families, love art, love literature. Uh, it is an anthology based on the original uh, mag magazine that was pr produced by W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, the Brownies book, in 1920. It lasted a year and a half, so it was 1920, 1921 is when it ended. He self-funded it, so it didn't last very long. We thought it would be important to not only remind people of that rich and amazing history. So there's chapters in the book that focused on the old material. And then we, Karita and myself, went out to our uh, list of friends, uh, writers, as well as, um, as well as artists, and produced this book, the new Brownies book, kind of paying homage to the original book. Nice. It is so good to have supporters it is it's amazing yeah. isn't it yeah. and because you know that tell me that people really believe in what you do right mm -hmm. and so yeah. you are supporters of a group that i'm very fond of and it's the lincoln project so yeah. tell right. us how did you get involved with that and so so initially we, we got involved through uh uh crockett uh and tanya our mutual friends of a friend of mine 
and Crockett had seen some artwork and uh, reached out uh, to purchase that original artwork. And that started a relationship. And that relationship has lasted for several years now where wow. he's been supportive of the things that we've been involved with. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he started telling us about the Lincoln School, it was something that we were very much interested in. We wanted to figure out how we could be a part of it because part of our commitment is to give back to our community. You know, we want to enrich, uplift, inspire, and give examples of their greatness, meaning young people in particular. So we, I think we're in line with the same objective. I remember, so Charlie and I co-directed this initiative for the Los Angeles Lakers called In the Paint. And In the Paint does a lot of things, one of which um, it hosts an art exhibition at the Lakers headquarters and showcases the works of black and brown artists uh, from the LA area. Nice. Well, um, as an avid art collector, Croc Crockett and Tanya Oaks were uh, our invited guests to In the Paint. They showed up in LA last year. And I'll never forget um, the way I met Crockett Oaks. He came up to me at the event. Now, I mean, there's hundreds of people there. All the players from the team are there. We're looking at all this amazing art. It's a grand um, uh, event. And he comes up and says, are you Dr. Brown? I want to tell you about the Lincoln School. It was the only school for African Americans. <laughs> and just the passion and love for the historical legacy of the Lincoln School, it oozed through his pores. Um, in a way that was just moving. And right then and there, I said, I can't talk to you about this right now, but that is a phenomenal idea. And I'm so glad that you and your wife have taken the mantle to see this project through. And when it is ready, I promise you that we will come to the Lincoln oh. School. So we are so honored to be here in West Plains, Missouri, sitting in the basement of the Lincoln School right now. Isn't that cool? So cool. Oh my gosh. It's amazing, y'all. So this is the project that they worked on. And look at it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It takes you back to where it all began. And it's just phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. Um, and shout out to uh, the artist. So that image that you showed is actually a, a huge mural, mural that's uh, upstairs in the main room of the schoolhouse, the a beautifully refurbished schoolhouse. Uh, the Oakses have done a phenomenal job with that. But this mural really tells such a beautiful story about the rich history of Black education and our pedagogical tradition, that we've always valued education, that we've always seen it as a North Star, uh, and a part of our freedom dreams. And that painting encapsulates it. And I wanna shout out the artist, uh, Dr. Bolaji Ogun, who uh, came from Nigeria to West Plains to produce that piece of art. It's phenomenal. Oh my gosh, yes. beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So Dr. Palmer, I mean, uh, I can y'all mix, y'all titles mixed up. So Mr. Palmer. Yes. Okay, so tell us about your artwork and the things that you have going on, because I know there's a little postage stamp that's going around somewhere, too, and I right. want to learn about that. Yeah, so uh, the latest project would be uh, the unveiling uh, two months ago of the uh, heritage stamp for the U.S. Post Office honoring Judge Constant Baker Motley, uh, one of the first Supreme Court, not the... Uh, the United States Supreme Court, but a, was it New York? Yeah. Uh -huh. Supreme Court judge. Uh, but she was very much the right, I want to say right hand man, but right hand woman of Thurgood Marshall doing a lot of the fight for the Brown Board versus Board, Board of Education and several other things that took place in the South and around the country. Wow. That's amazing. So you guys, wait a minute. So let me just show some of your artwork so people can see how phenomenal you are. Look at those works. Such craft, such detail. Thank you. I mean, you're taking it for somebody, someone who used to work for the Dallas Museum of Art. And I love and appreciate art. And I mean, this is just breathtaking. 
Thank you. So now the projects that you're working on, tell us about what's what's going on with you now, Mr. Palmer. Okay, so probably getting ready for my summer show and, and uh, in Martha Vineyard, which is uh, with the Nowhere Gallery. I'm also uh, just completed two different projects. One with uh, the number two band book in the country was written by George M. Johnson. Uh, I did a book cover for that. And George and I just completed another book where it's written, it's called Flamboyant. And it's about uh, the lifestyles of certain people in Harlem back in the day. I did the artwork for it. George wrote that material. And I also just finished a really wonderful book with uh, Kwame Alexander, who's a noted author, award winner. And it's, a base, it's based on the uh, music and the history of, of music in America, which is our music in America called How Sweet to Sound. Those are the last couple, couple of projects that I've just completed. Nice, nice. And then what about the, uh, the NAACPA award? Ooh. Right. You mentioned that one. I want it all. Give me all of it, baby. <laughs> I mean, tell we, us about that. We we are truly honored to have been nominated and to have won the 55th annual NAACP Image Award in the category of outstanding nonfiction um, for the new Brownies book, um, and it's an honor for so many reasons. First of all, because the NAACP Image Awards is Black people's Grammys, okay? It's our Oscar. So exactly. it, it, it just matters so much for the culture, but also because as we mentioned, the new Brownies book was inspired by the work of Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, who was a co-founder of the NAACP and the editor of chief in chief of the Crisis Magazine. So it just was so fitting that this work pays homage to the OG, the good Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. And the Brownies book is not just Charlie and I. We shepherded it, right. we stewarded the project, but it's um, included in that book are original works from 50 Black artists and authors. So wow. we all won that award, baby. Okay. Woo! Really just love the, the familyness of it all. Yes. I love it. I love it. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ron? Um, I, I've been percolating over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really want to commend you guys because you guys are role models. And I, I want to tell you why. Uh, because in today's society, uh, it, it appears that uh, our spotlight is on the wrong things in our community. And I'm so proud of you guys that you, you, you know, uh, as a power couple. Uh, and I, I just want to get that out of the way. Thank you. Uh, Harlem Renaissance was the reason why I achieved academic excellence. Mm -hmm. And it, it appears that you were uh, influenced by that also. You know what, it, what was, was interesting, and I'll share a brief story, uh, because a lot of people don't know what a rent party is. Mm -hmm. uh, but what was really fascinating is Do Dr. Karita Brown and myself met at a rent party. Wow. And it was a rent party. Uh, hosted by myself and a studio mate in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we had a friend that was going to, to Paris, France and needed a little extra money to stay a little longer because she was going there for a writing retreat. And so we said, let's do a rent party. Let's bring Atlanta creatives together, hang out, play some music, and collect some money for her trip. And that's where we started. But I'm always amazed when I mention rent party, it's so few people ever, ever heard of them. Uh, and I don't know why we don't do those kinds of things today, but that's how we both originally came together. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's fascinating that you mentioned that because uh, back in 1944, Alan Locke and another uh, author invited all the 100 uh, artists, uh, poets, musicians together up in Harlem to mm -hmm. actually start that, that, uh, that trend. Right. And uh, uh, you made a quote. You said art should change the temperature in the room. That blew me away. Mm -hmm. uh, expound on that a little bit. You know, uh, what, what, what I'm fortunate to be is I'm around a lot of young people that I mentor. And I literally one day was talking. And I must have said, <laughs> I'm sorry, I must have said that. 
because he he quoted it and posted it like several years later. And when I saw that, I'm like, that's brilliant. Uh, did I say that? And so I actually <laughs> went to Google and said, someone else say that. And he misquoted me. And it's like, yeah, but I, I believe that, that art should make you feel, but it yes. should change the temperature. And I'm not even suggesting that it makes the room hotter. It might make it a very cold room, but it makes it change. And I think that's the same thing with literature. Literature should change the way you're thinking, feeling, whether it's good or bad. And I think that that's what we've been able to uh, to collect here. And this, this anthology is a lot of warm and beautiful moments. Uh, rarely are you going to, in this book, I'm thinking right now deeply, is there a moment where it's cold? It gets warm to hot to hotter to warmer again. I doubt if it ever gets cold because it's full of love. One question, where is Fayette, Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what, Fayette is such a small town that I would say that um, it's not anywhere near Mobile. It's more in the center of the, the, the state of Alabama. And Tuscaloosa, which was 25 miles away, was called the big city. You know, yeah. so it was a really very small town, but my, my parents are both from there, and that's where I was born. Well, full disclosure, I went to Alabama State University, so I, I really threw that question out for the, for our audience who might not know <laughs> where in Alabama was. So uh, have, you ever, have you ever been to Fed? Uh, no, I can't honestly say I've been to it. Uh, I've been in the area, okay. but, I, but I knew some people from that area also. Hmm. Well, if you know somebody from Fed, they're probably a cousin. <laughs> well, uh, what's his name? Uh, the coach at uh, that he coached at Indiana University. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mike Brown. Uh, was it Mike Brown? I'm trying to remember uh, the name, but I know that my people know him, but we're we're not related. Well, my uh, actually one of my former co-workers. Uh, used to play basketball with him at the University of Montevallo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think in the future? You know, uh, I know rap and hip hop is the art form that was uh, 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 really instituted after the music was taken out of the, uh, the public education. How can we use that to uplift our community? Because I, I kind of see things are uh, kind of, you know, going sideways for lack of better of a, a terminology and right. you know what you guys bring to to our community is positively t and how can we get our young people involved in in the same movement that you guys are doing hmm. i have a thought but you have you have anything okay. all right well so so my first thought and i hope i hope this is understood because you have to be very selective about who you're listening to I, I see um, rappers today as, or hip hop artists, and many of them are modern day philosophers. If you're listening to the right ones, because there literally are messages about, like Kendrick Lamar said, if I, if I give you the game, I expect you to take it back to the community and give it back. You know, um, I think those kinds of messages, a lot of what, what uh, Nipsey Hussle talked about was investing in your community. Um, um, even uh, Jay-Z talks about making those investments, buying property when it's lower in price so it can double and triple and buying art. He talks about that when it comes to art and how he's invested and has made artists, but he's also made a lot of money on artists because he's made that investment. But it really is be selective in what you're listening to and you will get some wisdom there that might carry you a long way. Speaking of that, uh, has uh, Alicia Keys and Swiss Beast uh, purchased any of your art? No, I'm, I am not in their collection, not yet. Oh, man. Yeah. We need to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> because because they, are, they are right now on their tour uh, promoting black artists. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, and one of the things that, that I'm admire of you is that, uh, Full disclosure: I went. I went to uh, Alabama State to be a, a art teacher, or an artist. But since artists didn't make any money, I decided to go into business. You right. have uh, kind of turned that paradigm on its head. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what do you uh, give to aspiring artists to do what you have done? Hmm. Thank you for the question. Um, first of all, I have <clears throat> sorry. First of all, I have an amazing agent in um, in God and the ancestors, and they have been very instrumental in opening doors that otherwise I know I could never have have, have opened. I know that I have because I work with young people. They're often looking for the the secret, the code, the shortcut, and there is none. It is hard work. And so work hard, find a community of other artists that will push you and challenge you. And that's where your greatness will come from. You have to be fearless. Um, we are as creative people, sensitive, and but you have to be open to critique. Mm -hmm. And so it's all those things um, and open to um, non-traditional route. I think very much my success has a lot to do with being very uh, non-traditional in how I approach what I've done, you know, but trusting and knowing that I'm here for a reason. And now we use our platform to also ministry, you know, to also let the message uh, out there that like even when, when people were to use terms, artists use it all the time, it's self-taught. I, I push back on that every time. There's no such thing as a self-taught artist. You know, you're, you're God-led, you're informed by material that's available. Mm -hmm. You have mentors that have taught you and to state or say that you're self-taught is to, to dismiss everything that you've experienced prior to getting to where you're at. And uh, um, I want to say Dr. Brown, because I read your, re your resume and, I, you know, I, I, I I don't want to shortchange what you have achieved, uh, Kadidra. But when you speak of the fullness of black life, what exactly do you mean by that? Mm. I mean, when I, so I frame my research as I'm always interested in interrogating and uplifting the fullness of black life. And by that, I mean piercing appearing a lens into the full human condition through the lived experience of people of African descent around the world in the U.S. but uh, across the diaspora as well. I mean, what can't you explore through the lens of the Black experience? You can explore joy, pain, sunshine, and rain, economics, sociology, history, art, culture, architecture, nothing's off limits. So I just really um, ground myself in that space and, I, and I'm super intentional about what it is and what it ain't, you know? So it's not that uh, at the exclusion or a diminishment of others, it is that uh, I just find it such a wellspring to uh, source my scholarship and material and the questions that I ask uh, from the standpoint of the fullness of Black life. And isn't mm -hmm. it beautiful? Uh, I know you, you're you in Atlanta. How has Atlanta embraced what both of you bring to the table? Oh, man. Have they embraced it? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Uh, we, we, we hide most of the time. <laughs> when, when we're in Atlanta, uh, there's so many things going on. There's, there's always the, the uh, curiosity about who we are. Um, I think that we move intentionally in a space of uh, gratitude, in a space of elevation, in a space of uh, encouragement and inspiration. And so uh, I think there's a lot of people that see what we're doing, recognize what we're doing, sometimes wonder, what is the game? Why are we doing what we're doing? And it's like, because we have, uh, I'm thinking about um, Marcus's book, uh, Radical Reparations, but I also think about radical love for the black race. Mm -hmm. uh, we, like, like I've said in the last time I had a chance to talk about our love of black people, I said, uh, and y'all, some of y'all don't make it easy. You know, <laughs> you know, but that's the same thing in a relationship. When you're committed to that relationship, it's not always going to be easy. Um, but if you're committed to it, you're going to do what you can to make it work. And we're going to do what we can to let those young people in particular know that we see you and we strongly believe in you. And I have a good example of mm -hmm. Atlanta. So, you know, Atlanta is one of the few remaining chocolate cities, yes. okay, where you're going to see black folks everywhere. 
Okay, and you're going to see black folks uh, across the span of the socioeconomic spectrum. Okay, you're going to see black billionaires and black uh, uh, poor and working class folks all in the same space. You're going to see African Americans and black folks from the diaspora. You're going to, you know, really see that all in every space, and it's not a surprise ever. And I love that about Atlanta. Charlie's right, we do lay pretty low in our city. However, when the Brownies book was coming out, it was published on October 10th, 2023. We wanted to throw it a birthday party, a launch party. And we specifically wanted to invite, we wanted um, like folks who either were teachers, principals, school administrators, or movers and shakers with like nonprofits that dealt with youth those kind of folks to come out who have access to black youth because they're the audience for the Brownies book. Right. Well, me and Charlie, we don't really know people like that. Um, so we set a date, we put an invitation out. And y'all, when I tell you that over 200 people came wow. and stayed all night until we had to turn the lights on. And that's the kind of, when I think of Atlanta and like how Atlanta has embraced us and the kind of love and support mm -hmm. It is a per it, it can be not it, it can be a purposeful city when when it's about standing on business for black people black children folks show up and show out and we appreciate that mm -hmm. nice okay i have one last serious question tell me about brownie and blue <laughs> baby you that, that must be I, it that must be rj i want to hear what you, you don't want to that's not fair that's not fair <laughs> I, 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 what, what, what i would say so what i would say is my wife really loves brownie and blue a lot <laughs> so brownie Devonte palmer and blue black palmer are two pugs um and we love them dearly or at least i know i do baby am i not that you don't love them? <laughs> You know, and they're they're my source of joy because life sometimes can get so serious. You know, I'm a I'm a professor, an author, a wife. You know, Charlie's an artist, a mentor. He's teaching too. We're traveling all the time, and sometimes life can either start lifing and get too serious, or you can start to take yourself a little too serious. And there's nothing sillier than pugs. They're ridiculous. So they give me joy because they they keep me light. Love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you about Brownie and Blue? <laughs> you did your Big fan here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so let's let's okay, let's tell us tell the world why you are in West Plains right now. Well, very much uh we're here for the Lincoln School uh official opening today. Uh, it is going to be a hub. It's going to be a space for the elevation of us again. There's a very small uh, minority sector here, but it's they're still worthy of every piece of attention we can give them. Uh, it doesn't matter, like when it comes to Dr. Career Brown and myself, where we go, as long as we're there. And so if we're there and we're trying to be an example, um, we're trying to let, especially young black children know that the, the sky is truly the limit. The only thing that's gonna limit you from anything is your imagination, your belief system, uh, your thoughts of what, you, what, what your possible, your, what your possibilities are. And so in, in, in talking to Tanya and, and, and Crockett, it really is about these two are truly committed to the school, they're truly yes. committed to the city, yes. and they they want to make a difference. And he, they're reaching out to people that probably can be an example of what a difference looks like. And so we're just happy to be here. I love it, absolutely love it. You guys, I appreciate you so much for being on the show. Uh, tell people how they can get the book, how they can find you guys, and let the world know how to uh, how we can support you. Wow. You can uh, find and purchase the new Brownies book, A Love Letter to Black Families, anywhere that books are sold. So you can go to your local uh, independent bookstore, which we really try to support. Um, 
Barnes and Nobles, uh, Amazon, any online bookseller. Uh, so it's really globally accessible. So pick up your copy. It truly is um, a, an American treasure and a part of our collective legacy um, in terms of uh, African-American children's literature. One way that you can support us is we want this book on the coffee table of every family across the country, okay? Um, W.E.B. Du Bois said about the original Brownies book, he said, this is for all children, but especially ours. And we modeled that as well with the new Brownies book. It's for anyone who wants to tap into the beauty of the human experience and experience that on a beautiful ride alongside 50 brilliant Black creatives mm -hmm. who've come together to produce this book. Um, so if you can help us get it into the hands of children, especially, we would be ever grateful. Yes, absolutely. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to tell people how they can get in contact with you, sir? <laughs> you know, you can easily look up uh, Charlie Palmer with a Y, C H A R L Y Palmer, P A L M E R. If you if you Google that, my website and everything will show up, and that's one way to reach reach me. And your Instagram is very active. I yeah. don't have an Instagram, but he's super. He's got a blue check on Instagram. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Charlie, Charlie L Palmer on uh, on Instagram. Love it, absolutely love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank yes. you so thank much you. for supporting um, the Oaks. I appreciate it. Uh, what you're doing for the school. I mean, they have a piece of our heart here, yeah. and so it's that's like family. So uh, you know, if you're part of the family, welcome to the family. So we're thank here you. for you. This if we can do anything, uh, if you you know, next book or whatever you need, if you need some some help, we're here. Just give us a call. Uh, Crockett knows how to get in touch with us, and uh, we're happy to be there for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you for much. your support. And let us know when you come to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, oh. We were just there. We were just there. Let's we missed you guys. <laughs> we, have, oh, wow. we have family there, so I have. Uh, we call them the Virginia Beach Browns. A pocket of the Brown family who's there. We're in and out, uh, you know, every so often. So we certainly will uh, look you up. And we love seafood. So when we come through, we want to yeah, eat food. Yeah, yeah, when we come through, we want to see food. <laughs> <laughs> he likes seafood. He yeah. likes seafood. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that's where we are. I'm like about three blocks from the beach, and he's okay. so far from the beach. True. He's two blocks. He got me beat by a block. <laughs> So we would love to, to welcome you guys here. And the studio is actually, if you, you're from here, have been here, you know where Lynn Haven Mall is. We are three blocks up from Lynn Haven Mall. The oh, studio okay. is. So we would love uh, for you guys to come you into know, the studio. You know, I already have an idea. So thank you for uh, raising that um, into our consciousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys, until next time, you I know you got a busy, busy schedule and uh, y'all got to finish up because I know y'all been nonstop since you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again. And Thank we you. we are uh, happy to meet you. And um, yeah, just just look us up. And this was live. So you can go to our YouTube, like, and subscribe and share. And uh, until then, guys, SKST Radio, y'all tell them goodbye. Bye. Y'all see y'all later. Thank you.